This is our 2019 Cabernet Franc Rosé. And here at the winery, we've been making Cab Franc Rosé for uh, close to 10 years. The great thing about the Finger Lakes is there are no restrictions on what we can make, what styles, what varietals. And uh, as a result, you find rosés made from all sorts of different fruit. So we've made Merlot in the past. You see Pinot Noir. People use hybrids. Um, Cab Franc tends to be one of the more popular choices. And I think it makes a really nice rosé. And I'm going to say it. I think that the Finger Lakes really makes some of the best rosé in the country, and maybe up there in the world. Um, what we have in this region is this great balance of ripeness and acidity. It offers freshness. And when it's a hot summer day, there's nothing I want more than a Finger Lakes rosé. Uh, unfortunately, I always have a few of mine around to grab. This one doesn't have a label right now. We're tasting it fairly early. Um, it has been in bottle for about two and a half months, so we're at a really nice tasting point. You'll find it, it's got just great color, just this beautiful light pink. Our rosé was actually made from the process called Signe. So when we're making our red wines, Signe to bleed, we pull off juice to increase that skin to juice ratio for the reds. With the juice that gets pulled off, we use that to make rosé wines. So we're going to give this a pour and a taste. Incidentally, this Cab Franc comes from Jeff Morris's vineyard. Uh, this is just about 10 miles south of us here at the winery, over by Glenora Winery. Uh, the Cab Franc's been growing there very well for more than two decades. Uh, it's got nice vine age. The fruit tends to be really nice. Uh, I've worked with other Cab Franc in the Finger Lakes, and although some sites may have a little bit more uh, deepness in color, this vineyard year after year produces just beautiful, how else to say it, really fruity styles of Cab Franc. Uh, so when we make our rosé, a lot of that fruit extends right on through into the rosé and just complements it just wonderfully. In, well, I'm going to taste, then I'll tell you some more. So right away on the nose, I get everything from sort of like fresh banana peel, uh, which is probably a little bit of a hangover from vinification. Oftentimes when we're making wine, young wines, uh, while they're fermenting, can give off this banana type note or this bubblegum note that dissipates in time. But right now, uh, that's a really strong feature. But it's also nice because we're looking at this sort of tropical note. As that gives way, I'm really getting a lot of strawberry, raspberry. Even getting a little bit of like star fruit coming off this sort of exotic fruit salad. And a touch of gooseberry as well. It it, on the nose, it's fresh, it's bright. <laughs> happens to everybody. On the uh, palate, it's similar as well. It's got brightness. It's got freshness. Uh, some of these citrus notes are really coming through. We've got some lemon. We've got some grapefruit. Uh, the hint of strawberry is still there. The raspberry is still there. Overall, uh, I mean, just uh, it's calling for a pool. When we finished this wine and right before bottling as well, uh, there was still some CO2 left over. Because of the way we filter, uh, we don't use pads, we use a cross-flow filter. It, it actually preserves a lot more of the CO2 from fermentation. So remember, yeasts, as they're consuming the sugars, create the byproducts of alcohol and carbon dioxide. And by keeping some of that carbon dioxide in there, uh, when we went to bottle, it just adds this uh, kind of extra level of vivaciousness to the palate. This is a dry rosé. There is a subtle hint of sweetness that's there. Uh, alcohol on this one finished up right around, I think it was 12.5%. The sweetness level is probably only about, I think probably about 0.5 to 0.8%. Uh, so 
you know, five to eight grams of sugar per liter. So it's not sweet in any way, but I say that to say that it lends this uh, kind of rounded picture. It's not just acid. It, it helps to accentuate some of the fruit that's in there. Uh, as a result, I think this is going to just be a, a summer hit. Uh, I know it will be around my house. My wife's pregnant right now, uh, but the baby's due in August. And after that, I know that she's going to have a couple rosé nights uh, with some friends. And, and we will once the, the children go to bed. So uh, I hope you enjoy this rosé. Uh, it's a joy for us to make rosé every year. This bottling is fairly limited. I think we only made about 50 cases. Uh, it's one of the smaller amounts of rosé we've made as we've shifted a lot more of our attention to making our forward rosé. So enjoy. This is grapefruit of Cabernet Franc. I think you're going to love it. Uh, and they can't do this in California. <laughs>